And at the time, you know, Singapore was, was still kind of pulling itself out of the last Asian crisis. There were a lot of, as a practitioner of law, I could see a lot of kind of, you know, banks doing mortgagee auctions and things like that. And you can see these properties that, you know, like two, three years ago were valued at 10 million were going for two or three million, literally less than half the price, you know. And it was that sort of environment where there was no confidence in the market, you know, contractors didn't have work. It was, it was, it was a difficult kind of time in Singapore's thing. But at the same time, as a practitioner, I could, I could see kind of these opportunities there. All the time I was coming across this kind of sheets from Night Frank. They would send it to us because we had to do all the, make sure all the boxes were ticked by the banks before they, they went on auction. And I was like, wow, it can't really be that they're selling something like this, which, you know, three, four years ago, the valuation was 10 million. Now, you know, go to auction and value is 3 million. So at the time, you know, I was looking, wow, all these different, particularly in, in, in kind of Chinatown, a lot of these shop houses. And, and so it occurred to me, well, you know, that's, that's kind of an opportunity to come in. And, and it happened at the time, Kyong Siak Road, you know, there were a few um, uh, properties there. I noticed this one that was, used to be called the Regal Inn. It was basically an hourly rate hotel. The bank had foreclosed on it about a year before that and, you know, and gone on auction three or four times and no, nobody took it up. So at the time, I, I thought I'll take a year out of uh, practice and, and see whether I try my hand at being a hotelier. Because I'd, I'd come from overseas, I'd studied overseas, and there was, I, I noticed there were a lot of boutique hotels in Singapore. I mean, outside of uh, in, in Europe and stuff, and none in Singapore. And at the time, I thought maybe this would, would be an interesting thing to do, and I thought I'd take a year sabbatical and do it. And so I made an offer for that building, and you know, a very ridiculous offer in hindsight. And the bank gave it to me, you know, and. And so that's how really 1929 came along. At the time, I was a complete novice. I, I was, and, and you know, I told my parents, and they're like, Kyong Siak Road, <laughs> you know? Because it was still a red light area of Singapore. It's not anywhere like what it is now. Um, and you know, it, I think in my it kind of naivety, I, I didn't really think too hard about it. I said, well, whatever. You know, you go to Soho in London, it's, it's a red light area, but you know, there's so many exciting places there, or Montmartre in Paris, you know? So at, at that time, I, I think in, in a way, my ignorance was good. Uh, uh, this building was fabulous. I thought the architecture was great. And, and I worked with the, you know, I had no budget at the time. I worked with the architect and, you know, we, we, and that's really how kind of 1929 came along. 2003 we opened in the midst of SARS. You know, we opened a month before SARS. So there was a, a, a huge uh, lesson for me. But in hindsight, you know, that was the, the most valuable lesson because um, really kind of taught me a lot of lessons I would not have learned it had we opened with kind of full house, you know, because at the time you really kind of make sure your whole team bonds together and you guys think of new ways to, to people and make yourself known. And, you know, given that I didn't have a background in hotels and my, my team were all kind of pretty green, we came out with all sorts of kind of crazy ideas about promotions and things like that, which, you know, stood us in very good stead uh, uh, later on.